Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to an episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 91 today for the Portuguese Grand Prix in Season 6. If you guys did miss the second round at Imola, uploaded a couple of days ago, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. That was a very dramatic ending to the race, I must admit. I mean, overall, it was a really action-packed race from start to finish. But before we go on, I want to let you guys know about a new channel I have launch and you can subscribe right now with the link below or on screen annotation. It's a new IRL F1 based channel so if you've ever wanted to see more of me talking about real life Formula 1 the real sport, the, the Grand Prix as they come through the season then get subscribed to that. There'll be weekly content over there all about the actual sport we know and love and the game is based on. But yeah, last episode some real great fighting with George Russell but in the end of it both of us were unable to actually convert what was a front row lockout to even, a, you know, let alone one of us winning the race or even being on the podium in the end with rain on the way late on. It was a lot of chaos. We ended up having a puncher at the very end and made the most of it. Got some points on the board, but it was a bit bittersweet because, of course, we were within a chance of a win. It was a tough situation. I, I still maintain with the information I had at the time lap, lap through the laps, I just had to see how it went. Obviously, Obviously, in hindsight, you can say a lot about how that race went. But in the moment, I truly was very much on a knife edge of which way to go. And by the time I had not made a decision, basically a decision was made for me in terms of what I had to do with how close Guan Yu Zhou and the Red Bulls were closing up at that point. But uh, we went for it. We still did have a complete disaster. We still came away with some points. But of course, Antonio Giovinazzi kicked off his campaign with his first win of this season at one of two of his home Grand Prix, of course, with the Italian having Imola and Monza. So far, though, overall, it's been a quite a surprising start to the season. I think you'll admit, you know, we've had Bottas still in the lead of the championship then for Mercedes, and Verstappen is actually the one not even featuring in the top 13 there in the driver's standing. So that's a bit of a shocker. I really thought Verstappen was going to still be the clear leader at the Silver Arrows, but Bottas on his return doing well. Guan Yu Zhou obviously did very well last episode to come back through that Q1 knockout to be on the podium there. So we've got a few familiar names, but then also we had some surprises, I think, in there. McLaren, the reigning world champions, way down the order in the Constructors' Championship, despite you know having both drivers in the points, they're actually still behind Aston Martin, who is still holding on to their points all from the very first race, and Lotus Renault have actually looked surprisingly pretty decent, you know, a team that I feel like when it's an extra chaotic race, they could really make the most of it and actually grab some points. So yeah, already we've got quite a few different little interesting newer stories for me in this new season six of ours. And so round three, though, we spoke earlier about familiar names still being here. Well, we've got a familiar name track-wise returning to the calendar. Here we are back at Portimao for the first time since season four. So that episode in season four was quite some time ago. Actually, I think it was literally last year. So it does feel like an absolute age since we've been around this roller coaster of a circuit. And we're going to kick things off in Q1 with a very decent lap, I must say, consecutive laps we ran on that one set of soft tyres and they found some good pace but very close stuff there with uh, Guan Yu Zhou, Sainz and Leclerc you know we're only there, separated by two tens Russell a little bit down on time but I'm sure he'll find his feet and again we're showing that the car clearly is still very very decent in this new season. A uh, little bit of disappointment for Mercedes down there so obviously Portimao is a very different circuit to Imola and I was a bit worried to be honest because although we do have issues right here on our first run in Q2 by clouting the kerb uh, I was going to say in general, the My Team car has actually been so horrendous around Portimao, and the AI teams are so good around here. So I was very worried that we're going to lose all sense of that performance from Bahrain to Imola, but it's here to stay. So showing now, maybe compared to Season 4, the car really is in a state where it is going to be right there at most of the Grand Prix. Whereas Mercedes, they're clearly lacking some pace. Although that mistake I made at the very start of this lap has me a little worried. We started a good time, and there's a quite a lot of guys that need to improve a fair bit outside the top 10. So I think we're going to risk it. We're not going to go out again. I think we've done enough. We're P4 to be fair to us, but as the session goes on, everyone really speeds up and I get through just 
by a whisker there. Guan Yu Zhou unfortunately is knocked out along with Norris Bottas in the Mercedes. Verstappen maybe heard what I was saying earlier because he shows up here today with a P2 there. Leclerc though tops the session. The Alpha Tauris, the two Ferraris and Red Bulls there as well. And Sonoda is the only McLaren getting through, which is a bit of a surprise there as Norris has looked like the better one of the two, especially with Sonoda having a bit of a howler at Imola. But for us, we only narrowly, narrowly made it through into the top 10 shootout there. So we can thank our lucky star. So we're going to make the most of it now because we have the pace. I know myself and George can go for the top positions here. We just need to put the lap together. You know, the 113-1 we did in Q1 was, you know, would have put us right up there in Q2. So the, the pace is there. We just need to try and redo the lap we did in Q1. But that's easier said than done. The conditions are different. You can see overcast conditions. A bit colder out there around Portimao. That may affect things. Is that going to make any team faster or slower? Let's see. Across the line for us. And we're slower than Mick Schumacher there by about 1.8 tenths. So that is a little bit frustrating for me. We're down in P10. We've said a 30, uh, 113.3. So two tenths quicker and we'll match our Q1 time. But I think loads of people have gone quicker still. So the colder conditions actually helping out some of the other guys on their first run. But we've got a second run, of course. Two sets of fresh soft tyres. So let's just do a little bit better. A bit more aggressive into turn one. Off the exit. Later on the brakes here into this right-hander. Try and get the nose turned in slightly up on our time and then really pick up the traction a lot better than we did in the first flyer lap. So this is definitely going to be an improvement. We're purple first sector, green the second. We're down in P10. So this is to try and catapult ourselves up the order as our teammate grabs provisional pole position. And for us across the line, it's not going to be pole. It's not going to be the front row. It's the second row alongside Antonio Giovinazzi. Last race is race winner. Gasly is in second place in the Alpha Tauri doing really well but George Russell beats us in qualifying for the first time this season and you know quite you know comfortably there two tenths you know being quite comfortable margins in this kind of series and in season with everything so tight as of late. Uh, so yeah he's done me he's, he's just had better pace there. I could not match that. We did the best time we've done this entire weekend but that still wasn't enough so we're going to have to try and make up for it in the race. It's going to be very interesting. Like Bahrain, split strategies may come into play. Let's go to the grid. Welcome along then to Portimao, one of the busiest towns in the Algarve and a breathtaking destination that brings tourists from all around the world to the shores of southern Portugal. Today it's the backdrop for the latest round of the Formula One World Championship and with a circuit this wide, we could be in for a lot of exciting wheel-to-wheel -wheel action today. So Portimao features 15 turns over the course of its 2.9 mile length. Nine are right-handers, six are to the left and this is a track with a lot of uphill action which only accentuates the importance of getting those exits right, especially at turn four, where a good line can present opportunities to pass on the way into turn five. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. George Russell did very well in qualifying yesterday and will start today's race from pole position. And it's Pierre Gasly in P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Giovinazzi, the owner driver, Charles Leclerc and Sainz, Verstappen, Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, and Guan Yu Zhou, Norris, Bottas, Felipe Drogovic, and Lundgaard, Hamilton, Aitken, Lance Stroll, and Nobuharu Matsushita. Ocon, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Eilert, Armstrong, and Daniel Tictum. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. I reckon this is going to be quite an interesting Grand Prix then. We've got, you know, the likes of Ferrari and Mercedes losing a bit of pace. Red Bull still right up there. Alpha Tauri quite strong here. And Russell looking very strong. You know, that, that lap in Q3 was the maximum I think I could get because I was aiming for just a matching our Q1 time because that was the best lap I'd done so far. So we found two more tenths than that. But Russell and obviously Giovinazzi and Gasly found even more. So this is going to be interesting in terms of, you know, will that dictate 
dictate what kind of race pace we can do. I don't know. The strategy is also going to be a big factor today. Like Bahrain, the one stop can be very overpowered if you have enough pace on the harder compound. And I'm also still wary that historically our race pace hasn't been that great around Portimao. So this may be a tougher race than it looks from Quali. But let's go to five red lights to the Portuguese Grand Prix back on the calendar this season. Five red lights are out and we're on the way at Portimao. A slow start for the pole man. Great one for Giovinazzi but there's no room to work with. Into turn one we're going to take it easy. Leclerc's are outside. Gasly's been pinched in on the inside there but Leclerc manages to find his way down the inside to be side by side with us. We open up the door ready for him as we're too focused on Gasly but we re-overtake him back up into P4 but it's all stationary then at the front with Russell in P1 still but Giovinazzi with a great start gets up into P2 at least ahead of the Alpha Tauri of Pierre Gasly then behind us with Stappen into P6 Sonoda, Schumacher, Norris and Guan Yu Zhou up into P10 and you'll notice there's no Carlos Sainz because I think he got spun out at turn one so both Ferraris are in the bottom four of this race right now with Ocon having an engine penalty that sent him to the back of the grid anyway as we now look to make a move on Pierre Gasly hustling and harrying him but can't quite find the overspeed to make that little dive on the inside or outside into the first few turns can we do it here using a lot of ERS having a look but just ultimately not near enough to him there that would have been a bit uh, you know, of, uh, stupid of us to dive down the inside there and try and go for a bold move so patience needed here with Pierre Gasly as Russell continues to flex his muscles out in front with another purple lap but here we go then as DRS has activated this lap we don't need it natural overtaking here side by side nearly banging tyres but we're up into P3 that's a nice move but although we go a bit deep and Gasly comes back and it's then side by side through the left hander we were way too eager to try and make the most of it and push away from Gasly and in doing so actually went too deep into that right hander but we finished it off eventually and now Leclerc is actually now battling with Gasly so that's going to give me a bit of breathing room as the two Alpha Tauris have an absolute scrap and a half here. They're so equally matched. It's like they're stuck together side by side. Uh, you know, the, this teammate pairing is probably one of the strongest pairings, I'd say, in this career mode. You know, if you look back at previous results of how these two AI drivers have done, and uh, I mean, you can see how equally matched they are right now, squabbling away and probably losing each other time rather than gaining it. Sonoda now in the Vodafone McLaren Mercedes is closing up in P7, but you can really feel the absence of Ferrari in this race. Ocon down in P17 and Sainz all the way down the last place I feel Norris struggling for some pace here P8 there versus Schumacher getting away from him but Verstappen is really struggling well, hang on what's gone on here he was in P6 where Sonoda was I forgot about that and now he's down here in P9 something's gone on Verstappen has an issue maybe his car's slow because Bottas overtakes him and gets up into P9 there Verstappen yet to score points this season Mercedes Bottas to lead the championship in both uh, in both standings and it's all thanks to the flying Finn Bottas on his return to the team this season so that is a, a massive shock and is continuing to be shocking here as we see Verstappen push down to P10 and like I said it's a lonely old race for the Spaniard Carlos Sainz in P22 after being spun at, uh, at turn one lap one so back to our POV then a couple of laps into this race then in this first stint lap number six it's been a very tricky and kind of you know race of attrition really here with the Giovinazzi and Russell these two us three look at the pace we are showing look at the mini map Leclerc 3.3 the gap there and he's just kind of defending Gasly and so myself Gio and Russell kind of a lot like last season are in a world of our own in a different level of pace in this race but uh, we're still unable to get right up close to Giovinazzi and then look at the tyre wear there the oversteer I actually call in to box in this lap because my team told me that they want to pit on lap 8 so I thought that means Russell surely coming in on lap 7 then because they only usually ask you about changing and confirming the lap you're going to pit if your teammate wants to maybe pit before you and the AI teammates changing their decision so I felt like we'll counteract that because the only way I see we're going to you know get up towards Russell is trying the undercut because on pure pace it seems myself and Russell and Gio 
are so equally matched on this uh, first set of soft tyres. So we're on to another set of softs there. So going quite aggressive with this two-stop, soft, soft and medium. But it's only because I reckon if we can try and get two laps of undercut on this soft, surely that's going to be enough to try and get us close to Russell and at least try and jump Giovinazzi. But we're going to have some traffic to contend with. We've made an early stop, so we're now met, met with the slow car of Armstrong here as we go round the outside. This is going to be a fine margin there on the left-hander. Uh, the car's already on edge anyway by yourself, let alone trying to go round the outside of someone at that very corner. So off camber, and then also just the rear end wants to step out with the torch you're putting through the rear tyres. We now step through on Dan Tictum in the other Haas up into P19 and now flowing down the main straight to try and use his clean air to catch up to Lance Stroll, but ultimately just get the lap time in to try and bridge that gap to Giovinazzi and Russell, who both continue on for, well, more than just one lap. On to lap nine they are, load with, well, pretty much all the kind of top guys still out on soft tyres. So, uh, well, either they're making a massive mistake or we've made a bit of a mistake by going in early and kind of Russell and my, my own engineer, team engineer, have kind of finessed us in terms of making me think that Russell was going to come in on lap 8. He's not. I thought that was the message that he was going to come in earlier and so we're going to go even earlier than him to try and get the undercar. Uh, but no, not the case. Uh, we just saw Sonoda overtaking Gasly there as well lap 9. So the Alpha Tower at least of Gasly struggling for a bit of tyre wear. So it is kicking in but Russell and Gio still out there for how much longer I don't know but we've caught up to Stroll so at least we're showing good pace on the softs. I just uh, I don't know really I can't tell. It's very hard to tell by the timing ladder what the, the lap times are like for Russell and Giovinazzi because, you know, compared to the guys right behind them, everyone is on the softs and all surely having the same tyre wear. So the gaps aren't changing dramatically between those drivers um, and it's, you know, obviously it's very hard to calculate what the what the gap is between myself and those top guys being all the way down here in P18 with so many numbers to crunch on the fly. At the moment though, uh, what I do know is, is we're getting annoyed by the Aston Martin especially Callum Eilot here putting a real good defensive show in the Aston fair play, I mean it's for position but annoying for us to lose a bit of time there a few tenths you would say, probably having to hustle and harry him as we're now up into P17, catching up to Lewis Hamilton in the Williams Jaguar. I think there's a few pit stops that are happening, but still not that much action. Down the inside we go. Hamilton on a hard, so he's going very long in this race then. We're up into P14. It's lap 10, and I'm yet to see Russell or even Giovinazzi in. So this is either really worrying or really good news for us because they're going far too long, perhaps, on those tyres. Because remember, my original strategy my engineer gave me was lap 8. So even to that standard, they are going a lot longer than what my engineer recommended me to pit on as we go round the outside or try to go around the outside of one of the BMW cars. This is actually a really good battle with the Japanese drivers. We go off his arc having to drift through up the hill and we're actually getting re-overtaken by the BMW. So we are getting flustered a little bit, not making moves as easily as I thought so. And Russell now comes in on lap 10, maybe some others. So now we're going to find out if we have uh, successfully done a, well, a, what is now effectively a massive undercut of about four laps now because, well, we've either been duped or we've actually played this really well and we've been aggressive and we might be awarded for it. Let's see as we come now through the last bend and we're kind of just waiting to see where Russell is going to be. There he is now going down the ladder, but as we come through, he's stopped going down the ladder. He's P6 then. He's way ahead of us. There he is going into the next right-hander before the hill as we send one down the inside of Jack Aiken, who's caught napping. We're P10, he's P6. So Russell, he's gone and stretched the soft tyres for four more laps and pretty much kept the same gap, if not grown it a little bit, to be honest. As we go around the outside now of Drogovic in the Lotus Renault, we've got Lungard and Verstappen ahead of us. These, uh, well, these three seem to be struggling. They're still on the softs that they started on. So, so many of these AI guys are stretching the soft compound, but unlike Russell, these guys are struggling. Look at the lack of pace of Lungard as we go side by side. 
Oh, very, very fine as we lifted off as we went down the hill and then up the hill. We almost made contact with Lungard there, but a really nice overtake on the Lotus Renault. And Verstappen, who also is still on softs from the start. Look how slow he is. We're going to try and go around the outside of him, maybe in the last corner, or pretty much pushing him through the exit of the apex of that corner. And so he's so slow, but Russell was not. Russell did an absolute madness on that soft compound attire. He was actually still consistently quick. Despite going longer, Giovinazzi, he comes out on the hard compound, I might add, but he's behind us. So we've jumped Giovinazzi. So the undercut has worked on the Red Bull team, but the undercut has not worked on our very own teammate, who seems to be loving the soft tyre. He's gone 10 laps on the first set. Will he go 10 laps on the next set, I wonder? And, uh, well, for us, well, I don't know. Is Russell showing us our, our car is actually better than I thought on the soft compound attire? Maybe so. I don't know, but... It might be a, a difference of compound, what one you like, because we've seen that in real life as well. Certain drivers like certain compounds uh, compared to their teammates sometimes on the same race weekend. As Guan Yu Zhou now comes in from the race lead, he was on mediums outside the top 10, remember? So he's on a one-stop, medium to hards. Russell now into the lead, myself in second. We're both on a two-stop, both done soft, soft, but seemingly Russell is finding more pace and liking the soft tyre more in terms of, you know, being able to go longer and not not be affected by pace as we now see oh, oh very nice overtake by Sonoda around the outside of Lewis Hamilton who used to be in a McLaren and now sees the Vodafone McLaren passing him with ease up into P5 but Giovinazzi he's in P3 he is now on a one stop I think because he's on the set of hard ties so he's gone 11 laps on softs and he's on hards and he's in P3 so he's actually done an absolute madness if you actually realize what what's happened here because Schumacher Norris and Bottas they also were doing what Giovinazzi was doing they went longer on the softs and they've gone on to hard ties but they're down in P8 9 and 10 because they lost so much time stretching the soft compound attire whereas Giovinazzi He's done that, and he's still up there in P3, only two seconds back from myself, and then two seconds to Russell. So that's actually incredible, incredible pace by the Red Bull driver. I know he lost the position to myself, but the fact he's still there and not down where Schumacher is, is, uh, is a miracle. You know, because you've got Sonoda, Gasly, Leclerc, they may be up there, but they're on softs. They're doing the, the same two-stop myself and Russell are doing. So I think, if you look at it, if you look at the whole picture, Giovinazzi may actually be on to an amazing race lead here once we make our pit stops. Depends on how far myself and Russell can get ahead of him as we grow the gap already. Now lap 16 to uh, 5.9 seconds between myself and Gio. And we're keeping Russell honest. 2.1 the gap is, but I'm not closing the gap. Russell is loving these soft tyres and we're pushing each other so much. And this is the beauty of, you know, two former title rivals being in the same team we're pushing each other so much because we have that kind of, you know, from last season, that aggression of fighting each other. So we're pushing each other to go quicker, but we're both so equal on pace and Russell's loving the softs that I can't keep up with it. We've done really well to take these uh, ties. 11 laps this is. So we've actually kind of, you know, taken a leaf out of Giovinazzi's book and Russell. They showed me the soft actually was a decent tie. But for me personally, you know, it lasted that long, but you saw I wasn't catching Russell. So on the medium here, this is our only chance. I have to hope that the reason why Russell's been doing these long stints on softs is because he doesn't reckon he's going to be quick on the mediums. I've got to hope that that means I'm quicker than him on this set of tyres. Kind of like almost Abu Dhabi, remember, last season where we had that difference of what tyre compound we liked around Yas Marina. I think it may be the same case that I'm going to do better now on these harder tyres because I lean on a tyre a bit more maybe than the AI drivers. I don't know, but the, the mediums do take a while to heat up a little bit. A bit skatish on the outlap versus Grand you Joe on the hards, but now we eventually catch up to the man in purple and grey in the Williams Jaguar in season six. Here we go. Little lift off there as the, the understeer was kicking in as we went through that final bend. DRS open flying past him up into P10. 
And now we go and use the clean air ahead of us. 2.2 the gap to Valtteri Bottas. But you're going to see when Russell comes in, like this is going to be massive in terms of the gap for Giovinazzi then, who's going to the end on hard as we overtake Valtteri Bottas up into P7. We're flying through all these guys on hard compound attire. But they're here. Giovinazzi, he's a good 10 seconds further up, you can see, versus everyone else. Russell there, he's built a 10 second gap, but he's in now for that pit stop. But this is the big question mark now. Has he done it again? Has he managed to somehow finesse some decent pace out of very worn softs whilst I've been on fresher mediums and still stay ahead of us? Giovinazzi now is into a commanding race lead. Here comes Russell, but here comes ourselves into turn one. It's going to be so close. Russell! Goes side by side with Norris and he loses a bit of time with the McLaren driver that allows us to go side by side. But he dives back down the inside. We're side by side now up the hill. But we have the better racing line on the left hand side of the circuit. And he's got cold medium tyres. Our tyres are nice and hot. And so with that we're up into P4 and we've shown the medium tyre is our race tyre. Russell does not like the mediums I don't think. And he prefers the softs because for us we finally actually did pretty much jump him. I know we ended up side by side at turn one but that's close enough to get the move done whereas before when we were on fresher softs our fresh softs versus his worn softs were not good enough to bridge that gap but my fresh mediums were so clearly I go faster on mediums maybe and also of course we had a little bit less traffic that was also a massive factor in that but now we're not focused on that we've got the job done on Russell now it's all about the cars ahead of us Norris in P3 in the McLaren it's a 1-2 for Red Bull at the moment then with a G Giovinazzi with a commanding, I think, 11 second lead ahead of Schumacher. So this is going to be a bit of a tough affair. We've got how many laps? 11 laps to go in this Grand Prix to try and bridge 11 seconds to, to Giovinazzi once we clear these two cars. It's going to be a massive ask for us today. And to be honest, as we dive down the inside of Norris, big dive bomb. The grip is so, you know, uh, such a stark difference. The hard compound is such a bad tyre around Portimao. It's a big reason why, I, you know, I was happy to to commit to the two stop but what I didn't factor in was uh, well Giovinazzi doing an absolutely incredible job I am still so flummoxed that he went so long on the softs on lap 11 and then has gone to hards and is actually keeping up good pace on the hards versus his teammate who's not that great on the hards it would seem because Schumacher although he does give us a bit of a fight there because I, I didn't quite catch him uh, enough into turn one we get past him with ease now 12 seconds the gap so that's a large gap to bridge but we're going to try and do our best at 24 the gap down to 11.5 now as we catch up and we're going to soon lap the Ferrari man of Carlos Sainz Marcus Armstrong though is out of the Grand Prix and he's going to park up in a very awkward position and it's awkward enough for the safety car to come out. So the F1 gods have given us a massive gift because Giovinazzi, he is not far enough to make a free pit stop under the safety car. If he comes in, he loses track position. So either way, he is in trouble here. So Marcus Armstrong, thank you very much for that retirement. That's brought out the full core safety car. Now we're in business. Russell may be in business. He's not managed to overtake Schumacher and Norris though, which is a bit concerning, a bit weird. Kind of definitely shows how much Russell hates the medium tyre then, I guess, versus the softs. But uh, at least we have a massive chance now. We've already done the job of overtaking our teammates strategically in this race, so this is why we're in this prime position now to maybe go on to win this Grand Prix on the safety car restart. Annoyingly, we won't be right behind Giovinazzi because Carlos Sainz is a lapped car and he's in between us, and uh, unlike in real life, well, in the game, there's literally no mechanic of getting any lapped cars out of the way, so we'd have to try and just be side-by-side -side with Sainz and try and get a kind of long-range slipstream on Giovinazzi. To be fair, it is a long straight, so here we go. Going green any minute now. Giovinazzi gets gets us away and we're going to use ERS to try and close up on Gio. We're pulling in but we've got illegal overtake on Sainz but he's a lapped car. What is going on? Sainz! Oh my days! We've had to stamp on the brake pedal to get Sainz back ahead of us. What are you doing? What is the FIA? What is this game doing? Why have I been penalised for overtaking a car that shouldn't even be there? I understand that I maybe overtook Sainz across the start-finish line. And that's why it gave me the illegal overtake. But if you think about the real...
real life scenario, he is a lapped car, he would immediately have to get out of the way because of blue flags. Where were the blue flags for him straight away? Uh, you know, uh, secondly, and also because he was lapped, he get he started being shown blue flags as I started going into turn one. So I had to slam on the brakes because he was on the brakes, letting people through like my uh, like I should have gone through. That's an absolute. Kept. That is just a calamity. <laughs> it's just laughable. I mean, for one, kind of shows that, you know, the, the game definitely 100% needs the mechanic of actually getting lapped cars out of the way on the game, just like in real life. But secondly, that that, that ruling is just so just weird to me. Like, that, that's a lapped car. It should not fall under the same rule as overtaking before the finish line because it, it should, in theory, if it follows real life, not even be there. So... Yeah, the FIA in this game don't want us to clearly win this Grand Prix and uh, we're set back then. It's another bit of adversity here in the F1 My Team career mode in this game. We had a lot of it last season. We had to come back through so much. We had to dig deep so much and we're going to have to do it again as we overtake Leclerc and Sonoda and try to make our way through once again through these cars of hard tyre runners. Closing up to Gran Yu Zhou. No DRS quite yet, but we're not going to need it as we're flying through, having the traction to send us across this straight down the inside. Granny Joe actually puts up a bigger fight than I thought he would on the hard compound tyre. We're up into P6, but the laps are, well, lo we're losing laps fast. It's lap 30 now, and we're only catching up to Bottas uh, on this lap. Uh, Russell backing R uh, Bottas up a little bit, and he's losing pace to Schumacher in P3, so it really is the case. It's very peculiar, but kind of cool to see that Russell, it, you know, his AI is very much like a real life person has a preference of tyre and he clearly prefers the, the soft compound. We've seen it before to be fair. Uh, maybe that's why so many times last season McLaren did aggressive you know extra pit stops with Russell because he as an AI just prefers the, the softer compounds maybe because it was the overtake Bottas there. He's got no pace on those mediums. We get Bottas and uh, up into P5 and we're going to look to try and get Russell now but uh, I think that may be the highest we go because Schumacher is far too uh, far, far ahead 3.3 seconds now and we're on towards the last half of the Grand Prix so it's going to be a 1-3 for Red Bull uh, with uh, Giovinazzi winning the Grand Prix, Norris in P2 in the McLaren, with an amazing recovery from being knocked out of Q2, but who will be in P4? Myself versus Russell until the last half of the Grand Prix. We have DRS. We use DRS to get past him into turn one. We'll save the arrest though for later in the lap, just in case, because Russell actually gets a great exit off that corner. Doesn't die down the inside there, but we go a little bit deep. Russell gets a really great launch up the hill. He's got DRS. We we do not. So he comes back through on the inside. We're deploying all our ERS down the straight, but he's actually shot it through. We're side by side now. This is another ding dong battle, but we're going to win this one out surely. Russell tries to commit round the outside, but we've ultimately got the racing line. We've got slightly better pace on this tyre, and so we're able just to dance our way round that next right hander to maintain P4. But uh, it's a really hard fought. P4, all thanks to the FIA with that uh, illegal overtake message, but Antonio Giovinazzi, you, you gotta say, to be fair to him, if it wasn't for the safety car, he would have dominated and, and did deserve to win this race, but I feel hard done by because the safety car did happen, I'm not in control of that, it's just because the, the car retired, and then the FIA decided to nerf me from having a go at Giovinazzi there on the restart, so Gio wins back-to-back -back wins for Red Bull. What a glow up for Giovinazzi from last season to this one, eh? But uh, for us, ah, uh, frustration. Another bit of a setback in this race. Still some good points, but ah, uh, that was a tough one. Tough one to take, to be honest. So another fantastic victory for Red Bull today. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams and they're certainly proving themselves. Back-to-back -back wins for Giovinazzi. That is, uh, that is actually really quite impressive because uh, this early on as well, because the season is 
you know, going to be topsy-turvy from what we've seen. You know, it is so close, and yet he's come out on top twice now, so that's really impressive. But like I said, it was even, you know, kind of as impressive to see Norris up there in P2 because he got knocked out in uh, in, in Q2, and, uh, you know, the one-stop was uh, very strong for those guys. I mean, it, you know, the two-stop for myself and Russell could have got us P2 and 3 at best before the safety car, um, but it just wasn't meant to be in the end. Russell struggled on the mediums, clearly had all the pace on the soft, so... Uh, you know, in the end, finished behind us. So we're able to get some points on him, but we're still quite some way off Giovinazzi, who now takes the lead of the championship. Bottas, though, even though he had a quieter race today, still got some decent points to be up in P2, and his teammate Verstappen, nowhere to be seen in the top 14. That is probably still one of the biggest shocks this season so far. We're up into P2 in the Constructors. Red Bull, though, lead the way, but it's a Porsche-powered 1-2 in the Constructors, so showing Porsche were correct to expand their F1 program this season, you've got to say. But guys, if you did enjoy what was liter a literal roller coaster of emotions for me at Portugal, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly full-on content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.